Rockingham, where race number two of the weekend for the Armed Forces Race Challenge is about to get underway. The cars lining up on the grid ahead of their second race of the weekend. So it is uh, going to be another very busy grid. There you can see it with uh, pole position going the way of Mark Inman, our race one winner. Robert Taylor alongside him. Then Will Ashmore and Ian Fletcher, Mark White and Ed Fuller and Ed McKean and Chris Slater round out the top eight. It's the second fastest lap times from qualifying to decide the grid for this one. So there is a bit of a shuffle as the five second board is flown. Watch the yellow Fletcher horn to be in Fletcher from the inside of row number two. He made a demon getaway in race one. Can he do the same sort of thing in race two? The lights go out. The answer is well sort of, but it's the Caterham actually, isn't it, of uh, Ed Fuller that got the best drive. A terrible start from Rob Taylor from the inside of row number one and he slips backwards. Everyone is away though and charging down now towards the first corner. Good to see Simon Barlow out there after mechanical dramas meant that he was a non-starter in race one and it is going to be in with the least the way Fletcher into um, second position. Oh, and Inman goes off. Oh, Mark Inman off wide onto the grass and the Dean Hare, but it is so easily done. And not only does he lose the lead, he drops down to third, maybe fourth position as they head down towards Yentwood for the first time. What a disaster for Mark Inman. It looked as though he'd done everything right there to set himself up for a nice, easy, quiet Sunday afternoon drive to a victory. And all of a sudden, things change dramatically. He's got some real work to do now. Hopefully the car isn't too badly damaged. It shouldn't be. Ian Fletcher, therefore, takes over the race victory. But for how much longer? Because here comes uh, Ashmore, Will Ashmore, up the inside line. And just as he did in race one, he makes the move stick down into Kirby. That seems to be Fletcher's weak point. He's closing back in, though, as they head back towards Graceland for the first time. Ashmore leads the way. Fletcher up the inside line, though. Takes a much tighter line into the turn. Has to uh, try and carry good speed out of the corner. And he's good on the brake. Remember, down into Tarzan. So, Will Ashmore will remember that from their race one, race one duel, even, and defend the inside line, which he does. He eases Fletcher out onto the marbles. That's why he's fighting with the wheel so much on the dirty side of the road. We've got the BMW back to third now. Robert Taylor and fourth place equal at the moment. Ed Fuller and our race one winner, Mark Ashman. But Ashman on the inside line will go fourth on the brakes into the chicane ahead of Fuller and Mark White in sixth. Top five breaking away already. And Will Ashmore. Double winner from Silverstone, podium finisher in the previous race, and uh, wasn't on the podium if I didn't race with us, I believe. They did race with us at uh, Silverstone in uh, Ashmore. Took, uh, sorry, well, Park, I think, the first rounds of uh, the season. Will Ashmore, um, yeah, he's only had those two podiums, which were his two race victories, but he's in the lead now. Here comes the battle for second place going on. And it's Fletcher fighting off all comers here, really. Got the BMW uh, co uh, compact car of uh, Rob Taylor trying to go around the outside of him. The Vauxhall BX220 of Mark Inman. Has he got the inside line into yet? What he's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking. Oh, there's contact between the two of them. Inman's over the curb. This is how much di more difficult it becomes when you're Bayern back in the midfield. Well, not even the midfield, just outside the top two or three because it's very, very close quarter stuff as we saw throughout race one. They never really separated that much uh, in the fight for second on back and this time around Inman is a part of it rather than pulling away out in front again Ian Fletcher seems to struggle a bit going into Kirby but manages to fend off uh, Rob Taylor for the time being and Inman now looking to the inside of the BMW in towards Graceland's can't do it there though brilliant racing though this is and uh, as as unlucky it was for Mark Inman to find himself off the road on the first lap. It has gifted us a real race now because he's not having it all his own way. They all know how quick he is. And if they just stop and wave him through, he's going to run away with another race victory. Goes around the outside though of the BMW there. Rob Taylor made that look very easy. And Taylor was very slow on the apex. And so alongside him also now comes Ed Fuller on the, uh, the run down in towards the chicane. And the caterer you'd imagine will be later on the brakes. Or are they going to run side by side? They're going to try it. And actually the BMW stays in front. So uh, great driving there from Robert Taylor. Although we have seen that Ed Fuller hasn't necessarily, necessarily been quite as brave in the brakes as he could have been in that lightweight cage on this weekend. Just struggling maybe to gain the full confidence in the braking capabilities of that car. So back on board with Fletch, uh, Fletcher in the car in second place, Ian Fletcher. He's now got our race one winner, Mark Inman. Well, I was about to say, breathing down his neck. Actually, ahead of him, look at that. Nice move there. And that was just sheer horsepower, I think, for the VX220. We heard Anthony commenting to uh, Mark in his post-race interview after race one that uh, the car is very quick in a straight line, arguably the quickest out there in a straight line, and uh, improved it there to drive past the far from sluggish uh, Fletcher Hornet Mark 4 of Ian Fletcher, which is demoted down to third place now. 
battle with Robert Taylor and Ed Fuller as he did for a portion of the previous race. But of course, it was really Will Ashmore that Fletcher spent most of his time racing in, uh, in race one. Oh, big lock up there for the BMW of uh, Taylor. Down into Kirby. He's got to be careful doing that. Not only could you risk running off the track, which of course is not going to be beneficial for getting a good result, but you can flat spot a tyre very easily. And then every time you go to hit the brakes, it will find the flat spotted part of the tyre and you'll lock up more and more and do more damage to the tyre until eventually it delaminates completely. Smoke possibly there coming from the back of the race leader's car, I thought. Will Ashmore as it went through uh, Graceland. We'll have to wait and see whether that uh, manifests itself into a great problem. He's certainly got a, a bit of a problem on his hands now because Mark Inman, in the space of a lap, has gapped Ian Fletcher and has caught the race leader. Fletcher there in third, then the BMW of Taylor, then the Caterham of Fuller. These top five cars are still running in fairly close proximity, but you would imagine that uh, Mark Inman, based on the pace that he showed in race one, is probably going to be able to get through to the race lead. But then Will Ashmore showed how feisty he was in race one. Never backwards and coming forwards. And if you can hold on to the lead, he will. And even if he loses it, he'll surely try and fight back whenever possible. Well, here's another battle going on a bit further down the order. That's John Mitchell in the Renault Clio. And the 33 car is Simon Frohan in his Ford Fiesta, Ford Fiesta XR2i. Even easy for me to say. And uh, these two battling outside the top 10. About 13th and 14th, these two are at the moment. Oh, I beg pardon, it's Daniel Smith, excuse me. There are two very similar livery cars. One is Daniel Smith's Fiesta, and the other one is um, the 33 car of Simon Froen, but that is Daniel Smith that is fighting away here with the Renault Clio. Will be as soon as he gets to him. These two cars, of course, not as quick as the cars that we're seeing racing at the very front of the field, but they've got a class of their own to compete in. This for the race lead, though, and uh, Will Ashmore defending heavily now from Mark Inman, as I thought he would. I didn't think he was just going to roll over and let the Fox all go, but there might be a gap on the inside into Yenwood. No, the Civic has it covered. Will that mean that he runs wide on the exit? Yes, he does, in the rear-wheel drive Vauxhall. Oh, well, a bit too much rear-wheel drive there. He tried to get the over-under and use that rear-wheel drive traction and rather ran out of traction, actually. A bit over-eager with the right foot there, and so Ashmore hangs on again. This is one circle where Ashmore's been fairly quick all weekend long, not afraid to hammer the curbs through Kirby. Snatches a break though, runs out wide, and well, Inman's definitely quicker, and he's making fewer mistakes at this stage. I know he made the mistake on the first lap that put him back in the pack in the first place, but ever since then, it's been an imperious drive from Mark Inman to carve his way back through the field. But can he find a way through into the race lead? There's one more position he needs to gain, and it's going to be the hardest one to gain, I think. They go past uh, Simon Barlow's MG, which stays dutifully out of the way. There is definitely a, just a wisp of smoke coming from the rear end of that Civic, but I'm hoping it's nothing too much to worry about. It could just be tyre smoke, to be honest, either tyre rubbing on bodywork or sliding across the ground, but uh, he's certainly pushing hard. It doesn't seem to be doing it in a straight line, does it? Which is what makes me think maybe it's tyres fouling against the rear wheel arches, perhaps. But the Honda Civic, the VTI, Looks good, sounds good, and he's going pretty good at the moment, isn't it? Leading the race onto another lap. Now, what's the straight lines being performed like, though? Because that box will close in. You can imagine down towards Dean, Adam Morgan, Paul Waterhouse here in uh, his Peugeot 306 GTI. You can see inside, pretty standard there. It's still got the, the radio, still got the air conditioning unit in, all the dials that you'd see on a road car. They are standard production cars, these cars. Safety modifications, of course, you can see the full page added in there, as it has to be to race on a racetrack in the UK. So this battle for the lead, very much still raging. Oh, and Ashmore sideways there as he throws it into Chapman Curve. Inman, though, although he's got close, hasn't really been able to mount a serious challenge yet. This fight for third is still going on between Ian Fletcher. Um, Robert Taylor and Ed Fuller and Taylor again locking up and I think that's because he has flops and flat spotted that uh, front left tyre as I suggest it might have been the case a bit earlier on and now every time he breaks into that corner he's catching that front left uh, tyre. Have to manage that as the race goes on. There's that uh, smoke again from the back of uh, Ashmore's car and Inman maybe sensing blood in the water thinks about going up the inside into Tarzan. Just didn't quite get there before Ashmore got the move covered. Now here are two slightly different cars. We've got the BMW 330 attacking the very wayward Ford Escort Mark 1, and it's Chris Dancer who goes off in the Escort. 
rejoins and hands the place over to Thomas Sykes, but uh, they were two cars with some 40 years between them, battling as close as you like until the Escort, unfortunately, perhaps showing its age, ran out of brakes rather down into the uh, the Dean hairpin. Very easy to do that down there. They arrive at such high speed, needless to say, it's the fastest part of the circuit on the approach to Dean. And because it's such a wide circuit, there are no real reference points there. It's very easy to outbreak yourself. Well, actually, we can't afford to outbreak himself because one mistake and Mark Inman will be through and he's alongside now as they head down towards Tarzan. The outside line on the way in. Now, does he go right around the outside? He's going to try it. This is getting brave here, but this might just work. He'll have better traction off the corner from the rear wheel drive Vauxhall. Can Ashman get over to defend though? No, not quite. They are side by side down towards the school, uh, the uh, Brook Chicane. And I think that uh, Inman might just make this one stick. He's got the inside line. And in fairness to Will Ashmore, he knew when he was beat and he lets him go. But he's going to try and come straight back at him though as they come out onto the banking. That might be his last chance to do so then because that Vauxhall, we know he's quick in a straight line. And I reckon that Mark Inman might just be able to pull away. Ian Fletcher has got a grandstand view of this fight for the race lead as they come out onto the pit straight. And Fletcher will be hoping that they keep on falling over each other because it looks like his lap time has been pretty good of late. They've been taking advantage of their battling to actually close in slightly on leading two. Now that Inman is in front though, it may well be that that is as close as he gets. But Asheville is not giving in. It's a bit deep on the brakes though into Dean and that won't help his cause. Down into Yetwood. There you go. And time ticking on in this race as well. We're uh, well into the second half now. And is that going to be the move that makes it stick for Mark Inman? Can Will Ashmore come back at him? Well, of course, might end up focusing more on his mirrors than out of his windscreen if Ian Fletcher gets any closer. But we know Fletcher's car is fairly rapid as well around here. And don't forget that he's bringing along with him Robert Taylor, who's dropped Ed Fuller now slightly. There's a big old gap back to Mark White, so Mark White has really lost some time somewhere in this race. The driver who has won the race this year, but is not going to do so here at Rockingham. Mini about to go another lap down. That's Simon Skirton in car 56. It looks as though Mark Inman is starting to make good his escape now at the head of the field, back with Ian Fletcher, and yes, he's definitely catching Will Ashmore. He's a bit closer now, I'd say, than he was at the start of the lap. They'll both want to get up the inside of Skirts and Spinney clearly into the Brooks game, which they do, but Ashmore, again, just runs a bit wide. So two of those Fletcher, because he went in on a tight line to get past the back mark, and that compromised his line through the corner. Not too much, though. He'll get off the corner fairly rapidly. There is the number 33 car, which is Simon Froe, and he goes on the inside. Oh, no, and there's contact with Thomas Sykes. Sykes actually did really well to save that, because that BMW was rear-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive cars are notoriously difficult to save when they receive a bit of contact like that. But is that game over, maybe, for Simon Froe, and whose car has stopped right on the apex of the Dean Hairpin, but it still appears to be running. But his line of sight will be obscured by that tyre wall. He doesn't know when there's a big pack of cars coming. He dare to select reverse gear and try and carry on uh, for fear that he ends up getting uh, sort of wiped out by another car coming through. So uh, he may well be stuck there for some time. Looks as though Tom Sykes has been able to continue with no real damage in his BMW 330. He's been caught again slightly now by the recovering Chris Dancer who we didn't try and resume their battle that they were having earlier on turn through Graceland to the BMW, not quite as quick through there as the Escort was. Back down into the Tarzan hairpin they go. We're hearing that Froen's car is still stuck at the teen hairpin, that may require a safety car. Possibly even actually a red flag because we are getting towards the end of the race now, so maybe they decide start to call this one early, that would be good news for Mark Inman because he is very eager to see the champion flag, I'm sure race leader. He's not far behind these two actually about to put a lap on them, both of whom have had their dramas. Back out of the final corner, up onto the banking and onto another lap. Mark Inman, as I said, not that far behind. Beat the starting country they go and yes, there we go, red flag. Red flag is thrown, understandably with a car stopped in a dangerous position. There it is. And uh, Simon Frohn has decided to abandon ship. He's getting out of the car. Didn't much fancy sitting broadside across the middle of the road. I can't say I blame him either. So that is the race done. So confirmation of the result there. Mark Inman 
takes the victory from Will Ashmore in second and Ian Fletcher in third. A great race between all three of them though. Robert Taylor was fourth and Ed Fuller in fifth. Mark White a distant sixth ahead of Ed McKean, Darren Howe, Chris Slater and Paul Waterhouse. Then it's Tom Sykes, Chris Dancer, Simon Skirton, John Mitchell, Daniel Smith and Simon Barlow. We lost Simon Frowen and Ben Grundy was a non-starter. Well Mark, firstly congratulations on the win but you made hard work out of that. Yeah, I say it went straight on at turn two and dropped back to fourth. So I knew I had some work to do, which in an 18, 18 minute plus one lap race is, is hard work. Um, thankfully, got past a couple quite quickly, and then it was just me and uh, Will Ashmore. The WX220 seems to like the infield section more than it does the outs, the out section. Yeah, I mean it's, it's built for corners. So as soon as it get me in the corners, I'm, I'm going as quick as I can. It looks a right hoot out there, uh, driving with all your, your comrades. Um, what's it like from your perspective? It's, it's great fun, and uh, there's a great atmosphere in the paddock. We've obviously, all our, we're all camped close together, um, so there's a fair bit of banter and rivalry between the forces, um, but that just makes it more fun. So it's important to win on, out on track? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, I, I'm a veteran, but former Royal Marine, um, and there is no Navy or Royal Marines here, so I'm sort of representing them. Um, thankfully, did them, did them proud. Uh, well done. Thank you very much. Well, Will, uh, firstly, congratulations on the second place. Um, you tried your best to keep Mark behind you, but uh, you couldn't hold him off. Yeah, when I saw Mark go off at turn one, I saw my chance. I knew I had to get some solid laps in at the start just to try and create a gap. Uh, but within pretty short order, he was he was up me chuff. Um, I put up a pretty hard stand for as long as I could. Uh, at the end of the day, he was the quicker driver, and I couldn't hold him off for the whole race. Yeah, it looked like great fun out there. Um, how, what, what are your thoughts on the Rockingham circuit with the uh, fast, fast section followed by the, uh, the twisty, tricky in section? Yeah, I've I've always enjoyed Rockingham. I like that it's an anti-clockwise layout, which is a bit different for us. Um, the bank's always good fun, but it always brings out a lot of issues in my car. This circuit, I always have a few woes, but I managed to sort out the issues from race one for the race two. Clearly, I'm here, so uh, that was a bonus. But I've I really enjoy it, uh, and I enjoy jumping those curbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, for now, go and enjoy it. Well done. Yeah, thanks so much. Cheers. Hey, Ian, great start. Obviously, you led for a couple of laps after Mark went off. Um, it's a shame the red flag came out. You were hanging on. Anything could have happened. Yeah, yeah, a really good race. I, I knew from the first race that they would struggle in the last couple of laps, uh, as they had done in the first race. So I was just wanted to keep, keep in touch with them, bide my time, and then make my move. But... Unfortunately, the last couple of laps never arrived. You know, the red flags came out first. <laughs> Did you notice them in front struggling? Oh, yeah, they were having a hell of a battle. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering where uh, Neil was, was going to get past uh, Will. Uh, and he did it on the, the little wiggly bit, whatever it's called, b before the oval. Yeah. Right, well, uh, <laughs> well done on third place. Uh, go and enjoy it.